Welcome to the Defeating Epilepsy Foundation YouTube channel. In this presentation, we will discuss what post-traumatic seizures are, symptoms and risk factors, treatment options, and the impact a traumatic brain injury has on the brain. Make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell to be notified of future videos. Please click on our donate link at the top of our channel and donate today. Your donation helps us to make a difference for those battling epilepsy. We appreciate your support. Brain injuries occur when neurons are harmed or destroyed. These injuries are considered traumatic brain injuries when the harm comes from external physical trauma. TBI is the third most common cause of epilepsy with over 50% of people with severe traumatic brain injury develop post-traumatic epilepsy. Post-traumatic seizures are seizures related to a previous head injury, typically occurring in the first week following the injury. Seizures occurring after that week are defined as post-traumatic epilepsy, with approximately 80% of patients with post-traumatic epilepsy begin having seizures within the first two years after injury. Most post-traumatic seizures are focal and can become bilateral tonic-clonic seizures, meaning that they start in one area of the brain and can spread to involve the entire brain. Depending on the severity and frequency, these seizures can become debilitating for those who have them. During a seizure, there is abnormal electrical activity in the brain. There are a variety of symptoms associated with seizures, including staring, unresponsiveness or loss of consciousness, stiffening or shaking of the body, legs, arms, or head, strange sensations including sounds, taste, visual images, feelings, thoughts, or smells, and inability to speak or understand. Several factors increase the risk of post-traumatic seizures, which include acute intracerebral hematoma, bleeding into the brain tissue, acute subdural hematoma, bleeding into the space between the skull and the brain, loss of consciousness for more than 30 minutes, younger age, increased severity of brain injury, more severe injuries have increased risk of seizures, and chronic alcoholism. Risk factors for post-traumatic epilepsy are similar to post-traumatic seizures. These factors include post-traumatic seizures, those who've had post-traumatic seizures are more likely to develop post-traumatic epilepsy, acute intracerebral hematoma, acute subdural hematoma, brain contusion, bruising on the brain causing bleeding and swelling in the brain at that region, age at time of injury or older than 65 years of age, increased severity of brain injury. Post-traumatic seizures are typically treated with anti-seizure medication, which helps lower the likelihood of progressing into post-traumatic epilepsy. It is important to control seizures as soon as possible to prevent further brain injury. When there is a reoccurrence of seizures after one week following the injury, long-term anticonvulsant treatment is recommended. Medications will vary based on seizure type and medical history. While brain changes from traumatic brain injury depend on the type and severity of the trauma, there are several structural, functional, and chemical changes that may result in post-traumatic seizures. Closed head injuries may result in bleeding in the brain, brain bruising, brain swelling, lack of blood flow to brain tissue, and injury to the white matter tracts of the brain. Penetrating injuries can also result in scars on the brain tissue, the outer layer of the brain, or its coverings. Studies have also found that a disrupted blood-brain barrier, changes in astrocytes, and structural changes lead to seizure-provoking brain activity. The blood-brain barrier allows the blood vessels that supply the central nervous system to tightly regulate the movement of particles and cells between the blood and the brain. Blood-brain barrier disruption is associated with increased brain dysfunction and increases the chance of having slow wave activity in the brain. Both effects increase the risk of post-traumatic epilepsy.
Astrocytes are neurocells that respond to injuries by forming scar tissue to seal damaged areas from necrotic tissue and protect the remaining tissue. The scar, however, increases the likelihood of having post-traumatic seizures and the surgical removal of this type of scar may alleviate post-traumatic seizures. Additionally, animal studies have shown that increased risk risk of post-traumatic seizures is associated with changes in regions of the brain, such as the cortex, hippocampus, thalamus, and amygdala. Most patients with post-traumatic seizures show temporal lobe injury, and most patients who develop post-traumatic epilepsy also had temporal lobe injuries. In conclusion, post-traumatic seizures may occur in anyone who has experienced a traumatic brain injury. This can happen after events such as motor vehicle accidents, combat, violent assault, sports, and many other sources of external physical trauma. Post-traumatic seizures may be limited to a week following injury or may extend for years afterward. For some, these seizures last a lifetime. The symptoms of post-traumatic epilepsy should not be ignored. If having seizures more than a week after a head injury, seek help and consult a medical professional. There are different medication and treatment options that can be arranged by a physician. To learn more about post-traumatic seizures, please check out the resources used in the presentation today. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media pages. We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below or email us at info at defeatingepilepsy.org. Thank you for your support and together we will defeat epilepsy. Check out our other great videos and subscribe today. You have the power to defeat epilepsy.